Now I have several prior videos on this, and I do not want to become the guy who talks about vivisection on YouTube. However, in 26, um, I may be the guy who talks about vivisection on YouTube. Hello, subscribers! Welcome back to new episodes of the Mirror of the Throne. To get out to hit this um, red button, so that you subscribe to my channel and not miss one of my episodes. And if you want, but let me now go. Fifth section is the act of burning a cutting. I like the to cut thing. Um, burning, frozing, drugging, um, mutilating, um, and infecting animal or living animals with um, diseases. Oh, uh, with mutation diseases of uh, humans. One scientific. Um, Methods to make um, diseases being uh, to humans have uh, been, uh, been uh, good for humans to animals is on this moment not uh, was not uh, there. But vivisectionists still lie about this. Let me explain this in a Sorry, in a many ways. The immunological, physiological, and anatomical and psychological dealing with the cell structure and psychological difference being too great to overcome. Animal research will not and can, cannot save the lives of humans in any way. Guys, one of the first things I've uh, said on this channel, because I think it's a really useful challenge to the uh, political and organizational conceits that many vegans have. Um, Let me explain it in a little bit more ways. Are you aware that there is a way that uh, fifth section doctors can show scientifically that uh, humans don't get cancer from smoking how you know where, how they do that I put dogs in a uh, room put them on get put gas maskers on them and let them inhale smoke it's true that uh, smoking don't get lung cancer in Dogs. But humans get. Also, the fraud of uh, vivisection is subsidized around the whole world with billions of dollars that they get from lobbyists that uh, fool anybody and that vivisection can be benefited in any way to humans. In any kind of way of humans, for humans. When I was in a, in a medical school, I has asked some um, studies, students and doctors what, on which kind of um, animals they are studied for feline uh, leukemia disease. They say, uh, of course, cats. And then there are, then I ask them why not uh, dogs and then they say that it makes not so much sense scientifically. Then I ask them why uh, they uh, use them cats and dogs for human leukemia disease. Their uh, silence post the scum because fish section no fish section the actors and um, that kind of um, stuff do that 
that I use uh, catch for for can for canon is it says and so they don't use uh, dogs for cats and horses for dogs or pigs for uh, monkeys no that's also one of the reasons that being absolutely fraud one other thing maybe something that you'll find interesting also if after this video you have to um, see the um, website um, with the title um, America's in Japanese for me to call it Arthetament. There's the website of one of the most greatest um, scientists in medical uh, research, Dr. Ray Dreek. Dr. Ray Gilleek. That's his name, Ray Gilleek. Uh, political and organizational conceits that many vegans have um, was that if you want to tackle vivisection you have to cooperate with people who disagree with you you have to be able to cooperate with people who are insiders in the system um, including people who actually conduct scientific research themselves they're the people who know what you need to know um, they're the crucial partners you've got to have on board if you're going to make a difference in the real world and um, I got a letter, I got fan mail in effect, from a guy who is an insider, who is uh, conducting uh, biological research, including some experiments that exploit animals. Now, in my prior videos, I alluded to the crucial role that moderate people can have in these debates, and by moderates, I meant scientists who do torture animals to death, <clears throat> but who are interested in minimizing that torture. So those would be people who are not vegan, but who share with vegans the concern that some of the animal research is unnecessary, i.e. that the whole experiment is unnecessary, or that the particular suffering caused by the design of the experiment is unnecessary, people who see the moral value in trying to minimize the evils of vivisection, <clears throat> pardon me, but people who are not abolitionists or who are not calling immediately for um, an end to all such scientific research. Um, hello, Eisel, he writes. I've thought about mailing you for a while and never got around to it, but your recent video, Vivisection, The Next Ten Years, made me think of a couple points I'd like to share with you. I'm a recent graduate working in comparative immunology and about to start a PhD in global health at a major UK university. I've been vegan for just over a year and was vegetarian before that. A few years ago, I went on a four-day training program on murine slash mouse experimentation, and it was about this time I went vegetarian, period. So we get. Well, the reason why I'm against animal research <clears throat> is because it doesn't work. It has no scientific value. One cannot extrapolate the results of animal research to human beings. And every good scientist knows that. Doctors themselves will admit that animal experimentation is no good. For example, if you say to the doctors, well, these experiments in animals show that this drug is dangerous. It can cause cancer. It can cause all kinds of side effects. The doctors will say, oh, that's just animal experimentation. You can't extrapolate that to human beings. They themselves admit that it's no good. As, as far as I'm concerned, since animal experiments have no validity, and since they lead to quackery inside of medicine, I have to be opposed to quackery, and therefore I have to be opposed to animal experiments as a scientist regardless of what my moral feelings are about animals. That the particular suffering caused by the design of the experiment is necessary, people who see the moral value in trying to minimize the evils of vivisection, <clears throat> pardon me, but people who are not abolitionists or who are not calling immediately for um, an end to all such scientific research. Um, hello, Eisel, he writes. I've thought about mailing you for a while and never got around to it, but your recent video, Vivisection, The Next Ten Years, made me think of a couple points I'd like to share with you. I'm a recent graduate working in comparative immunology and about to start a PhD in global health at a major UK university. 
I've been vegan for just over a year and was vegetarian before that. A few years ago, I went on a four-day training program on murine slash mouse experimentation, and it was about this time I went vegetarian, period. So again, I asked the question, this is rare, this is extraordinary, but in a sense, we should wonder why. Why is it rare? Why is it extraordinary? I'm tempted here to add some, some autobiographical reflections, but I mean, if anything on earth is going to make you pause and reflect philosophically on the contradictions within our culture of, of animal exploitation, it might indeed be a, an experience just such as this one. Um, I was already thinking about that stuff when I was a high school student. The guy doing the training was, vance, was vastly experienced in animal research, having worked on everything from rats to pigs to dogs, and spent the four days delivering material on anesthesia, minor surgery, euthanasia, animal behavior, etc. Although he had not trained formally as a biologist, um, i.e. started out as a young animal technician and worked his way up, I was amazed at how much he knew about animals. On the first day, he gave an introductory talk that touched on perspectives regarding animal research, and to my surprise, he actually touched on the hypocrisy of meat eaters who are against animals killed for research. Sorry, pardon me, who are against animal research. Um, I've attached the graphic he used in his presentation, which shows the magnitude of animals killed for food versus animals killed by cats and animals killed for research. This really made me think deeply about my carnivorous diet. And when I was doing my undergraduate work, why I was involved in, I was involved in um, fulfilling all the university requirements to be a physiotherapist. I had to do a lot of dissection, which I did. I dissected cats, I dissected frogs, and so forth, earthworms, and I was good at it. Uh, the dissection went very well. Unfortunately, I forgot the fact that it was a class in human anatomy, not cat anatomy. And when I came to take the test, I did a miserable job. I failed the first examination. So then it became apparent that I should spend more time on human anatomy and less on dissecting the cat, which I did. And if people today would ask me, what part did dissecting, uh, dissecting cats and frogs play in my success as an, uh, well, an anatomist and a physiologist in that particular class, I would have to say absolutely nothing. Just this guy for making me realize, whether he meant to or not, that I could no longer justify my decision to eat meat. I think in the UK, whether they realize it or not, most of the public accept that the use of animals in experiments is more valuable than their role in agriculture. That's probably why the majority of the public here support animal research. However, there are still large areas of ignorance. A recent survey done in England showed that only around half of the 4,000 participants knew that animal testing for cosmetics is illegal here in Britain and the EU, and that importing animal-tested cosmetics into the UK is against the law. Clearly, testing cosmetics on rabbits is very different from testing vaccines on rodents, so there is much work to be done in helping the public make the distinction between animal testing and animal research. Pause. Now, for practical purposes, for this discussion, for my viewers, for the type of people who are intelligent enough to keep watching this channel and not just get offended and storm out of the room. They will say, oh, if it weren't for animal research, we wouldn't have insulin. And what would happen to all the diabetics? But they don't give you the darker side of the insulin question. They don't tell people that according to physicians themselves today, the most eminent leaders in the field of diabetes 90% of all diabetics who are on insulin should not be on insulin. They won't tell you of the evidence that insulin, when given to a diabetic over a period of years, can be responsible for the late complications of diabetes, diabetic retinopathy, blindness, and diabetic gangrene. They don't tell you the dangers of insulin. They don't tell you that just like with other drugs, penicillin, cortisone. Insulin today is so widely misused that it's quite possible that more people have been killed by insulin over the years than have been saved. On the contrary, that no testing a vaccine is identical to testing lipstick, to testing um, uh, cosmetics. pharmaceutical empire sells millions of dollars worth of drugs which are fed to the farm animals people eventually eat. We already know that all the products just mentioned are tested on animals. 
But not only testing and massive scale is involved here. Many of these powerful companies support or they are themselves involved in animal experimentation. What all of this means is, of course, that the most powerful corporations in America don't want you to know the facts about animal research and testing, even if your life depended on it. And of course, it does. In a philosophy department, I think that's a debate worth having. Meanwhile, down at Parliament Hill, we got to deal with this. We, we have a real-life set of murky contradictions and questions of what is the real difference we can make now and in the next 10 years. We got to roll up our sleeves and cooperate with people like this. This guy is incredibly rare. This guy is a, is a vegan or a would-be vegan or a semi-vegan. This guy wants to be vegan, who's working in a laboratory, currently torturing shellfish to death. Uh, you know, this guy is one in a million right now. Dr. Jerry Bassick, well, an ex vivisector You have to uh, watch more. You have to go do your research a little bit more about him. Uh, because uh, I've become too long if you want to do anything uh, that organic about them. I have to say something. Uh, when he was uh, in the school, he have, um, uh, learned that um, later on uh, that actually 99% of all the um, tests on animals can be put directly in the uh, Kiliko and that the 1% that uh, being mainly maybe one day uh, substantial for her human health can be easily uh, obtained by non animal uh, true scientific uh, efforts just like the ones that have gold on so just a couple of months ago you have to also understand that uh, the vivisection, the doctors that still use uh, vivisection uh, and use animals in their own, in their researches, we not only frauds, but been also addicted to an outdated form of research. Colin Blackmore, for example, how have uh, sailed uh, kids eyes for our, for our fund? is not more than a true scientist than the monster uh, than the scientists in the monster movies that we watch in the 70s and the um, 50s. Blackmore is not a doctor. He is not even intellect intellectual enough to bring it to medical school. He is a pseudo scientific fraud and salesman for the Fifi section industry. You don't have to believe me, but I'm still right. But think for a moment. This world, um, yes, I bring only the facts. I've been the mirror of the truth, and I don't lie to you. Don't believe the Fifi sectionists that get billions and billions of dollars to promote their propaganda. I have no money, so I don't can give you a lot of uh, propaganda. I, the only thing that I can do is show you the truth. If you want to know how I lie to you in this world, look to the money. Follow the money flow. And you will know what be the truth and how to lie and how to not. If you want to learn more, more detail and video about this topic, um, put it in the description. I can make a uh, 40 minute video maybe for you, where I can, or I go a little bit in more detail and. Uh, Talk also a little about of the of information uh, from the website of um, 
Dr. Uh, Greek, Greek, the um, medical uh, man uh, from uh, Americas and Europeans and Japanese for medical advance. One uh, non-animal uh, research uh, organization who had been opposed to um, uh, animal research when it's been done on uh, for human diseases. So check that website also out. I have a link in the description below. Just still on a power on a, some other ones and. Now I will to show you some uh, quotes to make this to an end of people in the history. An extra vasectionist how refuse to use vasection ever again or been opposed for, to it in any way. Don't forget not to subscribe. We got to roll up our sleeves and cooperate with people like this. This guy is incredibly rare. This guy is a, is a vegan or a would-be vegan or a semi-vegan. This guy wants to be vegan, who's working in a laboratory, currently torturing shellfish to death. Uh, you know, this guy is one in a million right now. This is exactly the person you need on your team. Uh, if you have a vegan charity, a vegan organization, a vegan lobbying group, uh, you know, illegal, sitting down with a lawyer trying to put together a, a, a you know, set of proposals for, for real reforms. This is the kind of perspective you really need to hear, even if you disagree with it, even if it's wrong, even if it's evil. This bred animal. More than 1,600 animal breeders in the U.S. offer all kinds of animals, from mice and rats to primates. These are animals who are bred just to be used as laboratory tools. In many instances, animals are bred with built-in diseases and offered to customers with surgical modifications. This simply means that some animals have undergone as many as 17 operations by the time they are sold to a research facility. This is simply a huge business. The largest and best known is the multinational Charles River Breeding Laboratories Incorporated of Wilmington, Massachusetts one of the fastest growing stocks over the past few years. The company's 1984 net sales were over $40 million. Recently, Charles River was acquired by Bosch and Loam Company of Rochester, New York, best known for its line of contact lenses. For just $135 million, Bosch and Loam purchased a biological assembly line which produces more than 22 million animals a year in plants in seven nations. You really need to hear even if you disagree with it. Even if it's wrong, even if it's evil. Okay? I've said this too many times lately. I don't want to be right. I want to win. And this is the dude you need on your team. There are vegans who will be offended that I'm not just taking the simplistic abolitionist position of saying, well, all of this research has to stop and has to stop tomorrow because I say so. Uh, it's humbling to recognize that you live in a democratic society where you're in the minority. Even if you think you're ethically right. Even if you think your, your minority is, is correct. Having a truly democratic, publicly accountable, 
publicly accountable process. Pertaining to animal exploitation research, I have no doubt that many projects would be approved. Um, but that would create a stark divide. Okay, are you going to torture a monkey to death to allegedly find the cure for cancer? And is that... The new anti-vivisectionist movement is not against research. It is against animal research. But its opposition is not only on self-evident moral grounds, but on medical and scientific grounds. Animal research is not science, and therefore its practice constitutes scientific fraud. The fraud of animal research can be easily demonstrated with two clear facts. Number one, the research animals are not human beings. And number two, the animals are always healthy before the experiments. Since animals are not human beings, their problems are obviously different from ours. Their bodies are different, they suffer from different diseases, and their reactions to drugs are also different. Besides, the fact that the animal is healthy before the experiment means that disease and or trauma has to be given by violent and artificial means, which can never be the same as the disease which develops spontaneously in a human being. Clearly, the results obtained from artificially diseased animals can never be extrapolated to human beings. Therefore, it is not a question of whether or to what degree animal research works. The point is that animal research cannot work simply because the premise on which it is based is false. Stark divide. Okay, are you going to torture a monkey to death to allegedly find the cure for cancer? And is that claim credible and a public scrutiny process to really look at? Whether or not this research is, is legit and matters, that's one thing. Vivisectionists lie about the final rule of uh, vivisection and refuse to use the follow-up 10 forms of true scientific um, research. One, human-based clinical research. Three. Eight term radiology studies and counts and this production of uh, human diseases, cellular and molecular biology using human based tissues and cell cultures and in vitro. And in vitro, adoption research, adoption research, biopsy research, computer models using virtual reality models, and 3D programming, mathematical um, models using. Uh, Dus formules te detecten, terug, terug um, om deze kogels en reacties, case studies, human-based genetic research, en nummer 10, trial and error methodology. But unfortunately, some people and organizations respond to the truth. Dozens of um, charities like the Eastern Seal Foundation, the, the America Kidney Fund and the International Eye Foundation, don't name and view. Response to the truth and refuse to use outdated um, scientific effort and use only the before scientific um, method that I have called so 
so that you still have the top. Um, to me, this is quite easy. I personally signed always with the victims of injustice. And therefore, I choose, of course, the side of the anti vivisectionists Because they show the reality. Well, one other funny thing. Uh, after that, the vivisectionists have um, used the techniques on animals. Then they go to uh, poor countries and use the tests again on Africa populations or or uh, other poor countries to use their uh, medicals on before it go on the market also a long time in uh, western countries <laughs>